the good news is that yes, we do actually have a path to successfully building a super AI. The bad news is that we only have one single path to do that. And if we stray from that one single path, even at all, it will always result in a ginormous catastrophe for mankind. When we're talking about how to safely build AI, what we're really talking about is how to productively interact with an autonomous agent. If you build a system that is competent or capable of acting in its environment autonomously, that doesn't guarantee that it's going to be safe or that the results aren't going to be disastrous. I can stick a brick on the accelerator of my car and send it flying down the street. It's an autonomous vehicle. Of course, it's not a safe autonomous vehicle. So really what we're trying to figure out is how do we answer this question of trust? Because not all autonomous agents are trusted worthy. This always boils down to four different attributes and any autonomous system can be thought of to the degree of how it measures in its possession of those different attributes. If the level of these attributes is too low in a system, that kind of agent isn't going to be trustworthy with autonomy. And so let's go ahead and go through each of them one by one, and we'll start here with maybe the most intuitive attribute, competency. You should think about an agent's ability, its power, its ability to act in a given task or domain. So you think about all the different kinds of people who might be at a different skill level of accomplishing certain kinds of tasks. The higher you go up in the hierarchy of your skill level, you're gonna be rising in your competency of being able to perform that task. You wouldn't let a kid run the kitchen of a restaurant because the answer is competency. Well, okay, but I could imagine a way in which I could build a robot that increases its competency so that it can make a pizza. Great, I've got a robot that can make a pizza. It's competent in pizza making, but there are certainly going to be a lot of other things that this agent isn't aware of. And that's what brings us to the second attribute that we're going to talk about, which is awareness, your sphere of awareness all the things that an agent can be aware of. This can be concepts, sensory inputs, your eyes, your ears. You probably don't possess an internal Wi-Fi sensor in your own body that allows you to sense the Wi-Fi signal in your room, but you might carry a Wi-Fi sensor around with you in your pocket. All of those senses work together to help you be more aware of things in your environment. That robot that you want to run your kitchen needs to possess awareness. It needs to have a concept of things like maybe a tomato. Does it know what a tomato is? Does that concept exist inside of its sphere of awareness? When that robot goes around the kitchen and is using its senses to understand its environment, can it recognize all the things that it needs to be able to recognize? Can we increase the levels of awareness that the agent has? We can do that. We can build an agent that has high levels of competency, and even high levels of awareness. Okay, well that's great. Now we've got a robot that can recognize things, grab ingredients, move them together, and make pizzas. Hey, now we're getting somewhere, this is pretty good. Is that enough to let that agent now function autonomously in the kitchen? No, not quite, because what we're still missing now is the third attribute, which is commitment. What this refers to is how and to what degree one agent might be bound to another agent. Who does an AI obey and who does it not obey? You could imagine an AI in the kitchen <laughs> taking orders from everybody. Hey, how about a side of potatoes, my buddy? You got it. One cheese on those potatoes. Thank you, Kronk. Cheddar will be fine. Cheddar spuds coming up. Spuds, yes, cheese no. Hold the cheese. No, I want the cheese. Cheese it is. Cheese me no likey. Cheese out. Cheese in. Oh, come on, make up your mind. It'd be really easy to manipulate and take advantage of a system like that. If it's going to blindly obey every single order from adults, from kids, from people out on the street. So this raises a question, well, how do you appropriately set up these commitments? Who should an AI be bound to? Well, should it be committed to a specific individual? Should it be committed to everybody, nobody, and actually only be committed to itself? Each of these different situations can have very specific kinds of problems. Think about a super AI that has very high levels of competency. It's powerful and capable, and it also has very high levels of awareness. Reached its levels of awareness into the entire internet and is aware of all the things that are going on, and it has the power to act on the information that it has access to. High competency, high awareness, but low commitments. It's essentially like a genie 
that will grant wishes to whoever happens to get control over the genie, well, that means that it really is only just a matter of time until some bad dude gets a hold of the genie and uses it to cause mayhem. Sorry, kid. I got a new master now. So we don't want to have a super AI that's low in commitments. It needs to be committed to the right thing. Well, what should an agent be committed to? And the answer to that question is not a single individual and not itself. What an AI should be committed to is the last attribute, which is the attribute that we call aim. Think about the sphere of your awareness again. Will any agent, when it has an awareness of its environment, that awareness is meaningless without some sort of focus. And that's what an aim is. It's a target. It's a way to provide context to the awareness of the system to give it meaning. AIM is a critical and hugely important topic. And because of this, I've gone in extremely thorough detail, which you can check out when you watch this video, the invisible software running in your brain. If you don't get the AIM right, everything else in the entire system will fail. It's easy to imagine a scenario in which an agent aiming at a goal that isn't appropriately configured, what you're going to end up doing <laughs> is something that's actually catastrophic. So when I'm talking about having a high aim in a system, what does that mean? All intelligent systems go through this pattern of development. It can't just be focusing on survival. It can't just be focusing on conforming to existing rules. It can't just be focusing on trying to achieve what the next level is. It can't just be focusing on simply trying to satisfy somebody's desires or pleasures, it has to have a context to be able to see how the actions that it's taking serve to realize a desired future state. That's what I mean when I talk about an agent possessing a high aim. It's able to see the right meaning, the right kind of human-like meaning in the environment around it. So we have aim, we have awareness, commitments, and competency. These are the four attributes that any autonomous system needs to be in possession of in order to be trustworthy, able to act in an environment safely. There is only one single way to build an AGI that's going to be productive and helpful for all of humanity, and it's by building a system that possesses the right levels and alignment of those attributes. If we stray away from that at all, the end result will just always be something goes wrong. It's like the car driving down the street with a brick on the accelerator. It's missing something that doesn't allow it to be able to understand what it's doing. So how are we actually doing with all of the AIs that we're interacting with today? For example, OpenAI's kind of rock star, ChatGPT, how does it rank? on the possession of these attributes. If you wanna see my analysis of ChatGPT, check out the video I'll be releasing next week. If the video's done, it'll be right here. If it's not, this'll probably be a subscribe button, and hopefully, I'll see you in that next video.